Hello, Custo community. My name is Ryan Majidmer. I'm a product manager on the Azure Synapse Analytics team. Today, I'm joined by Vincent Philippe Lozon, who's a senior product manager on the Azure Data Explorer team for this episode of Azure Data Explorer 101. Today, Vincent's going to talk to us about .NET SDK, so authentication, querying, and commands in ADX. I'm going to hand it over to Vincent. Welcome. Hi, I'm Vincent from the Azure Data Explorer product group. Today I'm going to talk about SDKs and show you how to use the query SDKs. Now, why would I want to use an SDK uh, against Azure Data Explorer? Of course, if I'm doing ad hoc queries and I want to do some data analytics, I'll use the tools available, either the web UI or the Custo Data Explorer desktop experience. But if I'm writing an application, I'm a developer, and I want to integrate the data from Azure Data Explorer into my application, I might want to run queries from my application on behalf of the current user and uh, fetch data. Or maybe I want to ingest data. Maybe I have a complex orchestration I want to take care of myself. So I want to orchestrate that when some data come in, I want uh, to push that data using an SDK. If we look at the SDKs, we have three SDKs. Azure Data Explorer. You have the data SDK, that's for querying or running commands on a cluster from the client application. We have the ingestion SDK to ingest data, to take data in to the cluster. And we have the management SDK to execute basically ARM commands or ARM REST API. So creating a cluster, database, data connection, deleting a cluster, stopping a cluster, that, that type of operation on the control plane to say. Now those three SDKs are available in multiple languages, .NET, Java, Node.js, Go, and Python. Today we're gonna look at the .NET SDK in C Sharp, and I'm gonna show you how to use it with a simple client application. So here I have the web UI, and I'm looking at the help cluster. If you don't know the help cluster, it's a publicly available cluster and a sample database is what we're going to look at. Before I start and look at the SDK per se, please know that in the one-click experience or the data management experience, there is an SDK tab and you can generate a sample application by simply following the instructions and we'll create a sample app that does querying and ingestion against your cluster. So that's a great way to start. But today we're going to go to the slightly harder route of starting from scratch. But first, let's look at what we want to do. So let's say I want to look at those tables. Let's say I want to do a query inside the time series table. So this table I think has a lot of data, 1 million rows. And uh, if we look at the actual data, we can see there's something like a scale unit, regions, I'm not looking for anything complicated. Let's just check if I can. There's a couple of scale units. How many? There's, there are eight scale units. So let's do that. Let's do a simple count by scale unit. Um, maybe just rename the column cardinality. and order by scale unit descending, ascending. There goes beautiful. Okay, that's the query I'm gonna want to run from a client application. That's my problem, that's what I want to solve. And similarly, maybe I want to run some command. Maybe I just want to run the show capacity command. Yeah, I just want to look at the capacity of my cluster, different slots, how many ingestion slots I have, etc., etc. So those are comments and query I'm gonna look at. I'm going to write my client application using Microsoft Visual Studio. Of course, you can use any tool to develop the application, such as Visual Studio Code, anything that targets the .NET Core framework. And within Visual Studio, I have a console application template with the console application sample app, which does a hello world. It works fantastic. Now let's start using the SDK. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a dependency to the SDK. I'm going to go to the NuGet packages. I'm going to browse and search for Custo and look what, what's in there. So right off the bat, I see the Custo data. That's the SDK I'm looking for. Otherwise, there's the ingestion SDK over here. There are the tools. If you're looking for different tools, such as Light Ingest, part of that uh, NuGet package, uh, the Custo language to parse uh, QQL, etc. Et this today, we're going to use the data NuGet package. Install it. Agree on all the dependency. Accept everything. Without reading, you should read. 
now I have my dependency. The first object I want to use is the Custo client factory, the one you need to know. And for that, you need to add some namespace dependency. And we'll see there's a bunch of create uh, methods on it. And that's basically a factory that creates a provider. So what is a provider? It's a provider for different API. So in this case, we want to query. So we'll want a query API, query provider. And for that, we need to provide a builder. Let's do that. Builder, so connection string builder. And for that, I'm going to pass the query URI. And I'm going to add samples here. So that is going to become the default database for my connection string or for my uh, provider. Now, if you want to have more details about providers and uh, similar things, you can come in the documentation, look at connection string. And here's a sample, otherwise you have all the different uh, parameters that you can put. But the nice thing about the SDK is the, where the connection string builder does that for us. So for instance, in this case, I might want to have uh, something with, and you have a bunch of options of what type of authentication I might want to use. So that's the first question. What is your application authentication mode? In my case, I have a console application that's running for the user authenticated user, in this case me. So I'm going to reuse my authentication. If you have a web application, you probably want to have a, an identity for the web application, or you might want to use a system identity. In this case, I'm going to use Azure CLI authentication. So because I'm using CLI on this laptop, it's useful for me. There's a bunch of options. You can look them up. If you want to check the connection string, you could output that over here. See that there's no magic. Actually, let's beautify, beautify this. All right, now we have our builder. We can pass it here. And the output of this thing is going to be our provider. So now we can grab our provider and do some work with it. So what, what can this provider do? It can execute a query. I want to use the async uh, method. So what are the parameters? First, the database name. I already passed the database name, so I'll skip it. Uh, the query, I'll pass the query. And then client properties, we'll talk about that a bit later. So client properties like this. Don't want the entire namespace, thank you very much. Yeah, all right, so the query is the query we used over here. So let me actually get that out, query text. Um, and I like to do it this way. Boom, I got my query. All right, let me put that so it's a bit more readable. And the output of that, if I look, it's a system the data that I data reader. That's for those of you who've been around for a while. This is a nadio.net object. Believe it or not. And of course, I need to await this thing because I have an async command. All right. So this thing should execute the query and return some result in the reader. Now, how do I extract the output from the reader and display it on screen since we have console application? There are many ways to do that. I'll show you two ways. The first one, which is but more recent is, uh, let's use two enumerable object array. So let's call that an array. And this returns an enumerable of object arrays. So the object arrays represent the columns of a row and the I enumerable enumerates over the rows. So of course I can do an item 
for each of the item. And uh, yeah, we'll do that. Instead, I'll go and say the first item. And so I'll put it in terms of CSV, so column separated format. Now if I execute this, you notice there's a little pause after the connection string. I'll come back to that. And then I get my output. All right, so that's the first method. The second method is a bit more old school. It's where I won't use the array like this. And I'll instead uh, loop or go inside the reader because reader is kind of a read forward object. So what I'll do is simply console write line. And here I can use the reader itself. I can use column index or I can use the column name. So in this case, I know I got cardinality. Let's make a quote there. Same thing for scale unit. If I execute that, I should have the same result. So those are two ways to extract value from the reader. So basically the reader is just an object that encapsulates the result. If you dive a bit further, you'll see there's actually more than one table that is returned. The same thing that when you run a query, you have the statistics of the query and sometimes vis visualizations, you have multiple tables. The first one is usually the one that you're interested in that contains the actual data. Now I told you that we would come back to the delay, the little pause we had just after the connection string. So what happened here, this is all in memory. I'm constructing an object. It's it's very fast. Here I'm doing uh, creating a connection again, the same thing. But here I'm executing the query. So that goes out of proc to talk to the Azure service. So of course it's longer, but the first time I didn't do that. But if I would do two queries, you would see that the second queries comes back much faster. So why is that? The first time you do that, uh, you have a TSL um, connection to establish. Then you have the authentication, you have the token and shake to establish, and then you can actually do the call. So that's what the SDK does under the cover. Now, if you would create a new provider each time you do a query, you would pay for that delay each time. And this is why we recommend to use a singleton pattern. So use declare and construct a single provider and use it throughout your application. And this is how you get the best performance. Now, similarly here, I could run a command. Instead, I could run my show capacity command and take, let's say, just do it real quick. Just take the resource uh, column. I could do that. Again, pause. And I got my um, all my capacity resources. Now you might, if you know a bit about the Custo architecture, you might find it odd because it's not the same endpoint for the queries than for the commands. It's two different endpoints, but the SDK takes care of it because it detects it's a command because there's a dot in front of it. So if you want to be more strict, you can use a command provider and use the control command here, which I won't run with respect of time. But anyway, so I hope this gives you an idea of the anatomy of a program using the SDK. First, you construct your connection string in order to connect to your cluster. In this case, I established a connection to the cluster plus the database. So I didn't need to specify the database, but otherwise you can specify the database here each time, or you can change the database from different queries and reuse the same provider to query different databases in the same cluster. Then you create your provider, then you can pass uh, different commands or queries, and you extract the data from their reader afterwards. So I hope that gives you a good idea of how to start and maybe it seeded uh, some ideas of how you could integrate Azure Data Explorer data inside your application. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Well, that wraps up our video for today. Thank you, Vincent. Tell us in the comments, do you use .NET? Do you use .NET with ADX? Are you now intrigued to use .NET with ADX? I would love to hear about it. Again, my name is Ryan Majidimer. You can find me on Twitter, but you can also find Azure Data Explorer, AZ Data Explorer on Twitter. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.